In this video, we will discuss the problem save your life. The problem says that given a string w, so we'll be given a particular string w, we'll be given another integer array b, we'll be given a character array x, and we'll be given the integer value n, where n is the size of the b array and the x array. Right, so let's try and understand this. Suppose that we have been given the first sample test case here. So we can have a look at this first sample test case. So suppose that we have been given this particular sample test case here. So in this particular sample test case, we can simply observe that the string W that has been given to us is nothing but A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Now N value is given as one. So N is the size of the X array and the Y array. So X array has been given to us. Only one character is there. We can see that C character is there, right? Similarly, if we look at the B array, so the B array correspondingly is having the value as minus 100, minus 1000, right? So basically what we can observe is, we can observe in this particular question that the question says that for the character, for the character, for the ith character of the X array, it has got a new ASCII code allocated to it, right? Basically the problem is saying that now C has a new ASCII value that is minus 1000, right? So let's suppose that if we had a X array, right? Suppose that we had a X array where we had the character, let's say A, we had B, right? And we had the B array. And correspondingly here we had one comma two or something right so in that case what would have happened is for a the new ascii value would be one for b the new ascii value would be two right so that is what is happening here now you will talk about in this question in for this particular test case you will say that okay for c the new ascii value is minus 1000 but what about the characters like a b d and e so if a particular character is not there inside the x array if it is not allocated a new ascii code so it will have, it will retain its original ASCII value only, right? So you can understand that A will have a particular ASCII value that it originally has. B will have a ASCII value. C will have a new ASCII value that is minus 1000. D will have a ASCII value. E will have a ASCII value. If you put all these ASCII values, right? If you put all these ASCII values as integers, right? If you put all these ASCII values, if you think about all these ASCII values as integer that are lying in an array, right? So the question says that, what you basically have to do is you have to indirectly find the sub array with the largest sum. You have to find that particular sub array which has the largest in this particular, uh, you can understand that in this particular sub array uh, of integers, that is of ASCII values, you have to uh, corresponding to every character, you have to find the sub array with the largest sum, right? And you need to return that particular the, that particular string indirectly right so you can understand that what we can do is if a particular character has been uh, if a, for a particular character if we have updated its ascii value then for that we need a map to store the new ascii value and suppose that if a particular character suppose that if a particular character has not got, got its ascii value updated then we will be using its original ascii value right and for finding the largest sum sub array we can simply use the cadence algorithm here right we can simply use the cadence algorithm here and we can keep a track of the corresponding string as well right let's suppose that uh, we uh, let's suppose that we do the operations and we find out that uh, this particular sub array suppose that we find out that okay this particular ascii sub array is having the largest sum then corresponding to that we need to print the corresponding string that is de right we need to print this thing up now let's try and see how we'll be doing it uh, in terms of code so what we'll be doing first of all here is that we'll be uh, first of all taking a map for uh, storing the for storing the updated ascii values for the each and every character present in the uh, x array and the b array right so what we'll do is we'll have the character to integer mapping that will help us to store the new ascii values of the characters right after this uh, after declaring the map what we'll do is we'll simply start iterating through the array right and we will simply say that map of x of i corresponding to the ith character will update it with the new frequency as bi as it has been mentioned and for those character for which we have not updated the ascii values their ascii values will be remaining the same right after doing this particular operation now we need to find the answer so what we will be doing here is we'll initially mark our sum as zero first of all then we'll mark our maximum sub array sum as int min right that is what we do while finding the maximum we uh, initialize it as int min then we will take a string initially we'll mark it as null answer string as null 
I'm going to take a temporary string as null as well, right? Temporary uh, string will be corresponding to the sum and the answer string will be corresponding to the maximum sub array sum, right? Uh, suppose that if, uh, as I mentioned, if DE is having the maximum sub array sum in terms of ASCII code, so DE will be stored in the final string as the answer, right? So what we will be doing going further is that we'll be starting to iterate. So for int, i starts from zero, i is lesser than w dot size, right? That is the size of the w array that we'll do an i plus plus. And after we have done this particular thing, so we will simply say that int ASCII for every i, uh, every character, we'll try to find the ASCII value, right? For every character w i of the string w, for every i -th character of the w string, we will try to find out the corresponding ASCII value, right? So we will check that if the i -th character of the w string, right? If it is find and found inside the map, so if it is, if we try to find it and it, and it does not indicate map dot n, right? So if it is present inside the map, then we will update its ASCII value as nothing but a map of w of i. That is, we will retrieve its ASCII value, new ASCII value from the map if it if it has been updated. But if it has not been updated, in that case, what we will say is we'll say that the ASCII value for this particular ith character will will try to find the original ASCII value that is there. So that will be nothing but w of i and we'll take the integer of it, right? So that it gets converted into the corresponding ASCII value. Now, once we are done with this part, so what we need to do is we need to take the sum. So sum plus is equal to ASCII, uh, current ASCII value, right? Uh, basically sum plus is equal to RF i we do, right? So here similarly, we are adding the ith element, ith, uh, ith integer value to the sum, right? And then we will check uh, and similarly, if we are adding, so to the temp string, we'll add the corresponding ith character as well, right? We'll add the corresponding ith character as well. And if it happens, right, if it happens that the current sum becomes greater than the maximum sum that I have seen so far, in that case, I'll update the maximum sum as sum. This is what we do in Cadence algorithm. But here we need to do something more. We basically need to update our answer as the temp as well, answer string with the temporary string as well. Right. Now, in Cadian's algorithm, whenever the sum becomes negative, so in that case, what we do is we initialize, uh, we update it as zero. We, we restart, right? Because uh, if if we try to take the sub array sum, suppose we are having using Cadian's algorithm, suppose we have one, then we have two, then we have minus five, then we have seven. So till here, we can see that the sum will be one. Till here, the sum will be three. Now here, the sum is minus two, right? So in that case, whenever we get a negative sum, in that case, we restart. So we start the sum as zero, right? So that here the sum can be taken as seven, right? So, right. So basically whenever the sum becomes negative, then we'll mark the sum as zero. And then in that case, we will say that our string should also be restarting. So we'll mark our temp as nothing but null. This is what we will be doing in the Cartesian algorithm. Now, once the Cartesian algorithm has been applied, then our answer will be storing the final string. So we'll simply return it. Now let's try and compile this code to see if it works on the samples or not. Uh, you can see that it is working fine for the samples, right? Uh, for the sample string A, B, C, D, E, uh, the highest, uh, the ASCII values that you will get is for D, E, right? So you can simply see that the answer is D, E here. And we are getting the expected output. Let's try and submit this code to see if it works for all the other cases or not. So you can see that our code is able to pass all the test cases that were present in this particular problem. Now talking about the time complexity of this particular code. So you can understand that uh, the time complexity for this particular code will be nothing but order of n because we are simply iterating uh, through the string. So you can say that uh, the time complexity will be nothing but the size of the w string that has been given and talking about the space complexity of it. So in the worst case inside the map, I'll be storing 26 characters right uh, or you can say that in the worst case uh, the total number of characters that will be uh, storing if we are given suppose that if we talk, even talk about the like a uh, smaller case or the bigger case character so we'll not be storing much so you can almost say that if you use uh, like if you are doing it like this then it will be almost constant space here right because since we are using a map approach and we are having only 26 or you can say 50 uh, like uh, uh, only the if you consider all these lowercase as well as the uppercase alphabets as well still it is uh, going to be a figure that is going to be close to 52 only right uh, we'll not uh, consider more than this number of characters from a to z from small a to small z and from capital a to capital z we'll consider the uh, the character so that that is why you can also consider the space complexity as constant or order of 26 close to that right if you have understood this particular problem and the code for it then make sure to hit the like button comment down understood as well
and make sure to subscribe the channel as well thank you for watching this video